Okay, here we're going to be looking at futures and forward contracts. These are contracts where we buy or sell a specified amount of an asset and it usually involves a commodity item at a specified price with the delivery at a specified future date. Now the forward contract, that's a customized contract between two parties, whereas this futures contract, it's a contract that's traded on an established exchange, a market like the Chicago Board of Trade. Okay, a good example of these contracts would be where a farmer is selling grain in the future when the crop is ready to harvest and a food manufacturing company like a cereal company would be buying, buying grain in the future when they need it. Both want to lock in prices so they agree on a futures exchange price. So at the contract inception here or the start date of the contract, the buyer and a seller agree to buy and sell at a specified forward rate or forward price here. And by doing that, the buyer of this commodity, in this case the food manufacturer, sacrifices the possibility of having to pay a lower price in exchange for eliminating the risk of paying a higher price, whereas the seller of the commodity, the farmer in this case, sacrifices the possibility of selling at a higher price in exchange for eliminating the risk of selling at a lower price. Okay, these forward rates or prices here represent the values in the future. Now for a forward contract, this cu the current value is represented as the present value of the futures rates and for a futures contract, the current value here is represented by the market exchange price for this futures contract. So accounting for these contracts, what we're looking for is the change here in the forward rates between the periods here. And then the total change in value of this forward contract is measured as the difference here between the forward rate that's agreed on at the contract's exception or the start date of the contract and the spot rate here at the forward date or the contract settlement date. Now again, this forward contract is based on the present value of the forward rate or price, whereas the futures contract is based on the market price for this forward rate. Okay, in the future when this exchange occurs, this spot rate here will most likely be either higher or lower than the forward rate agreed on. So looking at it in terms of our seller, the farmer here, he would have had a loss because he uh, gave up something here of greater value than he, what he received. He could have received um, 69 cents a pound, but he only received in this case 61 cents a pound. So in the case of our uh, buyer, the cereal manufacturer, he had a gain because he uh, received something here of worth 69 cents a pound when he had to only pay 61 cents a pound for it. And then to fulfill this contract, you do it either by a delivery of a proof that the product is in a warehouse or by paying the cash difference or by providing another contract at the market price. The actual product is not exchanged. Okay, to account for the contract, I'm going through an example here by looking at the cumulative change in the fair market value of the contract from period to period, and then look at these changes from the beginning of the contract to the end of the contract. And to do this, we have to compare the current period's forward rate, or price here, with the contract forward rate or price, and that's the agreed on price between the buyer and the seller here, and then multiply the difference times the quantity that's under contract, and that would be the fair uh, market value of the contract for the period that we would be looking at. Okay, going through an example here to determine the fair value for each period, starting with our May 1st period, we're looking at our forward rate here of 0 0.660, and we compare that to the 0 0.610 forward rate here at the contract start date, or that's the agreed forward rate here, and the difference here times our quantity would be a $5,000 increase here. Then looking at our June 1st period here, we take the forward rate of 0 0.670 and compare that to the contract start date here the agreed upon rate of 6.10 and then that also was an increase times our quantity here so we had a six thousand dollar increase in the market value of the contract and then looking at our last period here the June 30th period we take the 0 0.690 uh, forward rate and compare that again to the contracted rate here of 0 0.610 and 
taking that times our quantity. So we had an $8,000 increase here in the fair market value of the contract. And then to determine our accumulative uh, change here in fair market value for each period, taking our starting with our May 1st period here, we take the fair value for that period of $5,000 and subtract out the uh, contract uh, a value here at the start of the contract which is zero so we had a change here in fair value of five thousand dollars then looking at our june first uh, change here in fair value we would take the uh, contract or the change here of six thousand dollars for the period here of june first of and subtract out the previous uh, period ch uh, change here of five thousand dollars so we had a, a cumulative change here of one thousand dollars then looking at our last period here of 630, we would take the uh, 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 fair market value here of $8,000 for the period and then we'd subtract out the previous period of $6,000. So we had a change here in fair market value on 630 of $2,000. So looking at our cumulative change here for the May 1st period of $5,000 plus the June 1st period of $1,000 and then add the change here for 630 of $2,000 and that would be $8,000 and that uh, would match here the change in the uh, fair market value of this contract from the beginning to the end here of $8,000. All right, our changes in fair value for our futures contract, that would be the same as we've calculated here for the changes in fair value for each period. And that's because our futures prices here represent the current value of the contract. And we wouldn't require any discounting for this futures contract because they do represent the current value. All right, to determine the fair value for a forward contract, we have to discount the fair value for the period back to whatever days are remaining in the contract. So looking at our May 1st uh, period here to the June 30th period, we have 60 days remaining. So we discount this $5,000 back to its present value. And in this case, I use a 6% discount rate and that's worth $4,950 here. Uh, and then for our June 1st period, we'd also have to discount that back because there's 30 days remaining in the contract here from June 1st to June 30th. So discounting that back here uh, for 30 days using the 6% discount rate, I got $5,970. That's what the $6,000 would work here at its present value. And then for the last period here, the 630 period, well, there isn't any uh, discounting required because there's zero days remaining in the contract. So its value is here is $8,000. So to determine the accumulative amount, we have to subtract out the previous period. And in the, for our May 1st period here, we didn't have any amount here with contract worth zero. So that was um, the change here would be $4,930. And then for the uh, June 1st period here, we'd have to subtract this $4,950, the present value from the period, uh, present value for the period here of $5,970. So we'd have here a change of $1,919 for the period. And then for the last period here, we'd be subtracting out the $5,970 present value for the June 1st period from the $8,000 uh, fair value for the period here. And we had a change here of $2,030. So totaling these uh, net changes here, the $4,930 plus the $1,019 plus the 2030 here for all these changes here in our present value uh, equals $8,000. And that would be the change for the contract here from the uh, uh, start date of the contract here to the end date of the contract. Okay, in summary, any increases here in the future price of the forward rate over the uh, contracted amount would be a loss to the seller. In this case, it was the farmer selling the grain because he would have received less money here at the contracted price than what he would have received had he sold it at the increased forward rate. And it would be gain, a gain, in this case, to our uh, cereal manufacturer because he would have purchased less for the uh, grain in this case than had he purchased it at an increased forward rate. And then remember with the futures contract here, uh, these future prices represent the current value, so no discounting is necessary. And then for our forward contract, we have to discount this very value amount back to uh, its present value based on whatever remaining days there are in the contract.